Hey everyone, my name is Xprev and not too long ago we got the exciting news that SNES games are coming to Nintendo Switch Online. How do we know this? Well, this news came to us by Cappuccino Hack on Twitter, who is a data miner. So he found in the data for NES Online that there were SNES games listed as well. So there was a list of 22 games, you can check them out right here. And you have your classics like Link to the Past, Super Mario World and Super Metroid. But also some games that you may have not heard about and that's what I want to talk about today. So I'm gonna talk about 5 games from this list that you may have not heard about, but are still great nonetheless. A disclaimer before we start, this source seems very credible, but it still might not happen because it hasn't been confirmed by Nintendo yet. So take everything with a grain of salt. But just for the sake of this video, let's assume that it will happen so I don't have to put a disclaimer after each game. You will understand, right? Ready? Okay, let's go! Kirby's Dream Course is a golf game developed by HAL Laboratory and Nintendo and was released in 1994. There have been 4 Kirby games on the SNES, but it could be that you might have missed this one. It was also later released for the Wii, Wii U and the 3DS on the Virtual Console. Oh, and it was featured on the SNES Classic Edition. Well, okay, you probably have seen this one, but it's still a pretty cool game to start with. Instead of your classic Kirby game, it's golfing time with Kirby this time. With Kirby as the ball, you have to pick your direction, decide what kind of swing you want to pick and how hard you are going to hit. You only have 4 points, which are tomatoes, and if you run out, you lose a life. But every time you hit an enemy, you will also gain another tomato. After hitting enough enemies that there is only one left, the last one will transform into a hole where you have to put your Kirby ball in. It sounds dirty, but it's not. The game originally started as a miniature golf game called Special Tee Shot, which was eventually still released in Japan, on the Satellaview add-on. But later it was reformed as a Kirby game, a very relaxed game with some surprisingly fun elements. Demon's Crest was developed and published by Capcom and released in 1994. It's the third game starring the Gargoyle Firebrand, who first appeared in Gargoyle's Quest and later in Gargoyle's Quest 2. This game is really fun and has a very creepy and macabre atmosphere. You fight all kinds of different ghouls and other monster-like creatures. It involves some platforming and some combat. You start out with your regular form, which uses fireballs, claws that can cling to walls, and wings that will let you fly over gaps and enemies. Later in the game you will find crests that let you transform into other forms, like the ground gargoyle, which has low attacks and a dash for extra speed. The music is also very atmospheric and spooky at the same time. Oh, and you have this awesome world map that you can fly above to get to the next stage. Whee! You should definitely check this one out when it releases. Star Fox 2 baby, a game with a turbulent history and this time I really mean it, you have probably never played it, unless you had the SNES Mini, but still. Developed by Nintendo and Argonaut Software, this game was planned to be released in 1996, but got cancelled. The game was completed, but Nintendo decided not to release it. This was because the Nintendo 64 was about to release and Nintendo thought that people had higher expectations when it came to 3D graphics. The game has never been released on Virtual Console and then 21 years later after its intended release, it finally saw its debut on the SNES Mini. The game's alpha was leaked before that, so if you haven't played the leaked version or the SNES Mini version, this will be your first time to try it out. And is the game fun? Uh, well, that's debatable. I think a lot of people will have fun with this game, but for me it's a tad too difficult to control. Also because of the graphics, there can happen a lot at the same time on your screen, which can make it very disorientating. But still, it's nice that we get the chance to play this part of Nintendo's history soon.
Breath of Fire 2 was developed and published by Capcom and released in 1996. It's a turn-based RPG that's heavily story-driven. The game was later ported to the Game Boy Advance and was also released for the Wii's Virtual Console. It's a sequel to the first Breath of Fire, and the story is set 500 years after the original. To avoid spoilers, I won't go too much into story detail, but you start out as a boy whose mother died several years ago, when monsters attacked your village, which you find out in a pretty weird and casual way. Now you live as an orphan in the church of that village. Slowly things start to unfold and you will have to embark on a great journey. What especially stands out here are the graphics of the game. There are some beautiful settings, even for its time. The music is also very noteworthy, with a beautiful and diverse soundtrack. What I also love about the game is the wide variety of monsters, races and NPCs. As you can see by some of the art. There are a lot of different creatures which are all greatly designed. So, if you like turn-based RPGs, you won't want to miss this one. The Legend of the Mystical Ninja. Probably the one most well known out of this list. But I still want to recommend it for the people who don't know this game yet. Developed and published by Konami and released in 1991. You can play this game alone or in co-op. You can either play as Kid Ying, player 1, or as Dr. Yang, player 2. It's a beat-em-up game with a lot of upgrades and weapons. You have your standard melee weapon that you can upgrade 3 times throughout the levels to make it have a wider range. You also have a throwing weapon, but using this decreases your money count. You can also purchase bombs and other items. Levels are mostly split up in two sections. You have your first part where you can buy items or participate in a lottery and the second part where you have to fight waves of enemies, do some platforming and eventually have to fight a boss. Oh yeah, you can also crawl like a snake! Then slash ten game of the year. The game isn't heavily story driven but it has a lot of great humor and a great variety in levels. It's incredibly addictive to play, especially with two people. So when this one releases be sure to check it out because it deserves all the recognition it can get. Also, the cover art is amazing. I mean, <laughs> just look at it. So, that's it guys and girls, the 5 games that you should check out once it comes out. Did you also know that I made a video where I did 10 predictions on Nintendo in 2019? One of those predictions was that we would get SNES games this year. If you want to see what else I predicted, you can check out the video right here. So thank you very much for watching, if you like this video you can like it and subscribe to the channel because if you do so you are freaking awesome. So once again thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time, goodbye.